this time, I'm going to hand it back to Nancy because we're so excited to hear from Terry Lehman, our amazing, amazing guest with her winning strategies. So welcome again, Terry, and thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Emily. And um, so if you've been following us on Facebook or you joined our calls, you know that, that we started this incredible project of having our uh, WBEs talk to us about their winning strategies, right? And, and uh, so far we've, I think, had three or four um, uh, WBEs on and they've given us really great information, inspirational stories, uh, things that they did that that took them from point A to point Z sometimes. And I think Terry's story is going to be one of those that's going to wow everyone. And so I'm really happy to, to welcome Terry Lehman um, to this call to share her, her winning strategies. Um, and Terry, I'm going to start off by, by asking you to tell us about your company and why you started it. Okay, so I uh, was in programming most of my life, over 30 years. I had a successful career. I was in, I worked for NASA, I had my own companies, and I semi-retired because I had my son late in life, and, um, and I started looking, when you slow down, I started looking at what my carbon footprint was. Like, what was I doing? Why, why wasn't I doing other things? And that's why I started True Green, so. And it's all about sustainable products using sustainable raw materials. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so, so tell us about the name of your company. I don't think I ever asked you that, but it's an, it's an interesting name. So tell us how, how you came about with the, your, the name of your company. Uh, well, True Green Enterprises is the name. Um, had a difficult time coming up with the name. So, um, you know, kind of searched through, you know, the SunBiz records to see what's available. And we kind of came up with, you know, true green, because if you really want to be green, you got to be true to your statement. Beautiful, beautiful. So how have you used your WeBank certification to your advantage? First, tell us how many years you've been certified and then how have you used it to, to your advantage? So I started the company in 2007 and in 2009 I got certified and at first I thought oh I'm certified now all of a sudden I'm going to get you know get these these bids and stuff and and that's not how it works you have to you have to go to the shows you have to network you have to really work it it's just getting certified it's not the only thing you need to do so and and, the sh and going to the shows which I really miss them this year is very good because you get to meet other WBEs and you're always, I always come back inspired, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So can, can you tell us a, a little bit about your experience with, with Disney? I know that you met them originally when you attended the Go for the Greens conference. Right. So, so tell us about that. Yeah, so I met them at the Go for the Greens and then um, the more people and the more business cards you get within a corporation, the better. Um, so then I got invited to do one of their shows that they had, supplier shows in Orlando. And then I was talking to people there and then I got invited to go to their sustainability uh, expo that they had out in California. And I just got everybody's business cards and I sent out one blanket email to everybody and the vice president of purchasing said to um, the buyer in um, in Orlando he goes you need to meet with her <laughs> so and that's how it happened and what I did was is I went to um, Disney World and land and I went to every bathroom and any every place that served anything napkins straws and I put them all in ziplocs and I labeled them and I went to my meeting and I kind of pulled it all out and I put it on the counter and, because a lot of times they don't know what they're purchasing that you know it's it's because other people are purchasing certain things and he looked at me and he said, wow, you really did your, you know, thank you for doing this for us. You really did your job there. And, um, and we ended up getting the napkin bid. Um, yeah, and so, so I think that's a really incredible lesson um, on, on how to market, right? And how to do your, your research. Because as you said, taking the time to do what, what you did, going into the bathrooms and, and in, in the restaurants and all, not many people do that, 
right? They just kind of will stop. And it's really important to look at the corporate that you're targeting. It's really important to look at their website. But can you actually say, I know your product. I've seen your product at XYZ store. And here's where I would put mine next to yours. Or here's what I would do to enhance who you're already doing business with, et cetera. And then also, now I, I know the answer to this, but, but tell us how long it took you to go from meeting um, the first person you met at Go For The Greens to actually having that, that one wow um, meeting. It was about six months um, between the shows and the one in, in, in Disneyland. Um, and then, yeah, so it was about six months. And then from there though, the, the process of actually getting their contract is probably another four to five months, you know, so they have to, you know, they have to go through their channels, get it approved. And, you know, then you finally get your contract. And so it, it's about a year. Mm -hmm. So it was about a year and, and um, an, an, a, an investment on your part too, right? Because you had to fly out to California. Then you went to all the, the, the different Disney locations and, and picking up the stuff. So it doesn't happen overnight which I think is really important for, for a lot of people to, to know, because as you started out by, by saying, Terry, you, you started your business in 2007, you got certified in 2009, and you thought, okay, so now I'm going to get the contracts. Well, you know, we, all of us here on this call, wish that that were the case, that once you get certified, the contracts start rolling in, but that really very rarely happens. What we do, um, and what you should take advantage of, is give you opportunities and access, right? So through Go For The Greens, um, Terry learned about Go For The Greens because we have partnered with Go For The Greens from the very beginning. She took advantage of this opportunity right in Orlando um, and wow. So, so here, here is that opportunity. So, so tell, tell us about Pepsi. So, and one of the things about the shows and networking is, and you know, you go and, and maybe you get an appointment to meet with the corporate or not, but when you keep going year after year after year, they know you. And I had, I had them call me and say, hey, we're looking for this cup and we can't find it. And we know that you're an expert in sustainability. So what I was promoting through all those years was my expertise in sustainability. And I said, well, it just so happens it's a new product of mine. <laughs> and and, um, and it was in, um, it's still in a test phase. And, you know, so basically I hopped on a plane and, you know, went and, and finished, you know, what I was going to be doing in, you know, a few months and did it right, right, right away. And, um, and then um, after the show, the buyer called me that Monday, I think the show ended on Friday and, and I had a meeting with him in Miami and he was just so excited. And um, it's a long process though with that too, because they have their own supply chain issues where they can't figure things out. They, you know, they wanted these cups and they just couldn't figure out how we're going to do that. Cause you know, you got bottlers and you've got all these other ways. And so, um, and then, and then the buyers changed. So I had to kind of move to a different buyer. And, and so that it, it was uh, definitely, now I have a third buyer. So um, you just have to kind of move and transition. And you really just got to have rapport with them and make their job easier. That's, you know, that's what I try to do for them. Like on the, we do all their Gatorade cups. Mm -hmm. And I constantly give them the production. I say, okay, I think you guys need to place some more POs. And then the next day I get POs. So it's like me helping them do their job. Mm -hmm. Wh which is a really important point, right? So it's not just get the contract and, and the POs are going to keep rolling in, right? Just because you're doing right. a good job, you have to be on top of it and uh, kind of monitoring the inventory and all of that for them as well. And that sets you apart. That shows that you are a really great partner. Right, because right. you're not in this for the one and done. You're in this for the long haul. Um, and I, I, I remember you mentioned to me also about the Gatorade cups that that you had had gone in and and talked to them about sustainability and how awful it looks at these races. You know, Pepsi owns Gatorade, right? These these uh, races, the 5K race, the uh, cross country races, etc., the marathons. 
um, the runners are just grabbing and dropping, right? So, so they go by a table or by a, a, a line of people that have these cups. They swallow a little bit of the Gatorade and then they just drop the cup and keep running. So after the race, there's all this plastic talking right. about, you know, a sustainable company and, and your carbon footprint. I remember that, that you had mentioned that to them as well as a really good selling point as to why your products would make a big difference. Right, because they're hostable. And, and from the cups, uh, we went to, you know, there's a, a, Mer a Bank of America in Chicago. They bought our cups because everybody said, oh, Pepsi's got these new cups. And so we've had all these people calling us about the cups. And then you, you went from the cups to the Super Bowl cups and straws for Pepsi, and and just the new recent thing is we just got a PO uh, a week or so ago for juice box straws for Greece for all Pepsi products there. So and and that's a big one that because those straws are so small and they're so bad for the environment, and the oceans, and the turtles, and so it, it that's a nice thing. And they're excited as well as far as you know being able to replace it with our bamboo straws. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, so, so tell us about the, 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 the toilet paper and the, all, all of the, the, um, the, the products and the, the opportunities that, that you've had this, this past year. Yeah. So basically I make gold now. It's, <laughs> um, so, you know, we had our own opportunities, but also I wanted to mention that um, I was working with CVS in a, in a different angle, doing private label, but Julie from, from uh, WBE, she referred me to uh, CVS and we picked up there for them this year. We did over 300 containers of toilet paper and paper towels for them. So it's been a very busy year for us. And obviously, you know, we're up 4,900% in volume and, you know, over 350% in revenue. So it's, it's a big year for me and now you go to the store and the shelves are empty again so you know we're expecting round two to happen for us in January and you know and hopefully this thing goes away but it's helped I know it's helped other companies but it's definitely helped my company as well right 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 and and so so just um you mentioned in passing um Julie but but for those of you who don't know, Julie is another WBE, and it's all about the networking, right? So you got to know Julie through through the WeBank network. Julie knew about your company. Julie knew someone who who could, um, you know, get you a meeting, and from there, uh, you know, uh, great things happened, right? So again, for those of you you listening, uh, uh, one of these winning strategies is the network taking advantage of the network and always letting people know what you do and how you do it, right? And, and I want to go back for a minute, and ter Terry, and ask you um, how you set yourself up as an industry expert. How, how did you become a, a thought leader in, in your industry? Well, I, I always have to know everything about what I'm doing. So um, I, you know, did a lot of research. It took me over a year and a half to come up with a toilet paper that was actually um, could compare to a virgin product. So, you know, I basically it's a lot of research, a lot of knowing what's going on, um, you know, and then, you know, just I live, uh, you know, we live it like right here in the offices. We don't, we try not to print on paper. You know, even though we do make tree-free paper, we try to do, you know, so we do everything that we can to, to be as sustainable as we can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you, you did um, a short video that's on your website still, right? That kind of explains the whole process, right? Yes. So, so that's important too. And that's a, a way to set yourself up at, as an expert is to do, we talk about doing a white paper. This wasn't a white paper, it's a short video and it's very informative. Um, and I bet when people are trying to find out what it is you do and how you do it, that video makes a big difference. Yes, yeah, so that kind of goes through, you know, how you know the trees are cut, being cut down and what the forests are looking like. You know, we use uh, bamboo, which is, is so rapidly renewable. You actually are taking the outer 
um, the outer stalks to make the let the newer ones come and shoot up, and it grow, they can grow up to. 30 inches in a day. So, um, you know, it, it really is the best. I mean, they make everything out of bamboo. You've got sheets and you've got floors and you know, toilet paper. So it's a very renewable resource. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, 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 great. So um, what is the most courageous thing you did this year, Terry? I would say take on CVS's POs. It was a lot of work. Um, you know, my whole team here, we, we worked, um, you know, I worked weekends, I worked nights, you know, just to make sure the quality was still there, but trying to push out so much volume, um, you know, that we didn't, you know, we didn't even, uh, thankfully something happened where I brought on a new factory last minute. Um, normally I visit every factory before I took them on, but I couldn't because of the situation. So, you know, but we did do our due diligence via cameras and videos and things like that. And if it wasn't for them, we probably wouldn't have been able to fulfill so fast. So it was a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, what is the most creative thing you did this year? I'm not sure. <laughs> creative would be just the way that we managed the projects, really. So that, I mean, we had to come up with ways of making sure that you know the supply chain right now is so disrupted out there you can't even get 40 high q containers coming in from china um because they're half of they're all here and they're not going back yet so because there's a definite you know um supply chain just it's not they're not buying enough from us and so we're buying more from them so what i started doing this year which i've been wanting to do for two years is I'm bringing parent rolls over and I'm manufacturing here and I'm doing my first test like next week. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That That's gonna be great, made in the USA. Uh -huh. Good for you, good for you. Now, um, t tell us about what, what you've done for, for your staff as part of, you know, this gearing up and, and taking care of your staff. And I'm, I'm referring specifically to the yoga. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, you know, we have, you know, the, I feed them lunch a lot because, you know, we're working so hard and, but I, the yoga, we do yoga two times a week. I have one of my girlfriends who's a yoga teacher. She comes in on Tuesdays and Fridays and from 11 o'clock, don't call us from 11 to 12, our phones are off and we basically do yoga. So it's, it's just, it's really nice. You do a little meditation at the end. It just kind of breaks up your day, gets rid of that stress and, everybody feels revitalized mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and i i think that's a, a that's a really creative way to to keep your team productive right and it's great for for team building it's great for um showing that you really as as a as the the head of your company you really care about your employees right by offering right. them this break twice a, twice a week so I think that's a real winning strategy for those of you out there listening. If you are in a position to do something like that, yes, buy them lunch. That's absolutely a, a, a good thing to do, right? But also, what about trying to bring in something where, where you can actually deal with the stress level, right? By um, bringing in a, a yoga teacher or, I don't know, maybe some musicians can come in and play during lunch. I mean, you can get really... <laughs> about how you do that but i think that that uh, as a strategy for growth taking care of your employees is key to, to to growing your business yes absolutely so so finally um terry what words of advice do you have for wbes i think that uh, once the shows come back you have to go to them um, and then just reaching out to other WBEs, that's really a, the network in there is as important as the corporations, working with the corporations. So, you know, like the Julie story, she said, you know, she sent an, an email to CVS and, you know, all of a sudden you get the business. So if we can reciprocate in any way, it's, um, you know, that's really the helpful thing. I think that the WBE to WBE. Yeah, and I, 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 I think that, that you will also say that, that the important thing is to kind of know what your goals are, 
right? Because um, all this business came your way, but you kind of knew what you were doing and you knew what strategies that you needed to, to um, put in place to, to make this happen, right? Yeah, and now we, what we have to do is we're, you know, now that we can take a breath because we kind of finished all of the POs for CVS, I mean, we still have our normal distribution business, but now we have to plan for 2021 because, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, ramp up that much and then you don't really, you really want to kind of not go down too far. So you have to, so we're working on our 2021 plan now. So. Mm -hmm. Great. 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 Well, thank you, Terry. I, I think there, I saw a couple of questions in the, in the chat and I'm going to open it up to ask if, if any, uh, anyone on the team has questions for Terry as well. I have a question, Terry, uh, regarding your sourcing of your, your supplies. So for the bamboo and the sugar cane, where, where is that sourced? So 95% of the usable uh, bamboo and sugar cane is in China. So moving production of producing and from there, you still have to buy the raw materials from there. Okay. So would you be able to potentially procure some of the sugar cane here in Florida? I don't, I mean, I know it's a lot involved with everything, but just out of curiosity. So the plant in Florida, um, were, they were burning it for a number of years. And then they decided about two and a half to three years ago, to create a plant so that they can do uh, plates and bowls. It took them a hundred million dollars and I think they're still kind of refining it. So it's not an easy thing to get the raw materials into the end result that you want, which is the parent rolls for us. Right. Wow, thank you. So, so, so did, did I hear you right saying that you're bringing in some parent roles and, and, and looking at manufacturing here? Yes, we already have them. They're in, I, I found a, a place in Wisconsin that um, does facial tissue. And so we've, we've brought in some roles and they're doing our first test now and we'll have our boxes made in the USA shortly. And then we're gonna grow on that plan. Cause that's, it's really big. I know uh, Walmart came to me one day and said, you know, if you, if you make it in the USA, we'll take your products on. I'm like, okay, <laughs> just got to get to that part, you know, and you be able to handle the volume. That's the other thing is don't take on more than you can actually do. You know, Walmart's very big. And, you know, if I was to, to take them up on the offer, if it still exists, I would only go to their neighborhood grocery stores because there's they're the perfect situation for us, not the super centers or the other, you know, so you got to know where you want to be. We're in their Sam's clubs now. So we're already doing business with them. So we can branch out once we start making it in the USA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very yeah. much, Terry. You gave us a, a, a lot of information and a lot of really great winning strategies, everything from, you know, the, the, the traditional get to know, the, the business, become an expert at, at what you do to the not so traditional bringing in, um, you know, yoga instructor twice a week, <laughs> help your staff uh, be, be more productive. So thank you and congratulations on, on your success. And, and you know, here's to, to even more success in the years to come. Well, thanks for having me.